in sciences, but we also have a lot of students who ultimately would like to pursue a career in medicine or chemistry. Um, they start off in a general chemistry course, many of them do. We pull a lot of engineers into this course. A lot of the LSNA students do place out of it, and they go through a whole year of organic chemistry, and then they arrive down here in physical chemistry. Um, the particular course that I have is a physical chemistry for the life sciences. It's a non-calculus-based course. It's for non-majors. Um, they call it PCHEM to make it sound really scary. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a lot of the majors go on into a more advanced calculus-based physical chemistry course. So we're kind of scaling down. And this is the end of their fourth semester of chemistry. So I'll tell you about the students in the course. Um, this is the enrollment varies across the uh, terms. In the fall, usually we have chemistry has a large student enrollment in most of the classes in the fall. Um, then we start with 419 or 20 students in the fall. We get a small proportion in the winter. And then in the spring term, I have 88 students this coming spring, about 80 um, for the spring term. So it's offered three times a year and you get small as you go on. So large lecture course in particular. Um, in terms of grade wise, I have some variability. This is their year in school. About half of the students in the course are juniors. Um, we've got about a quarter sophomores and about a quarter seniors and then some other students who, who jump in who are their fifth year students who are returning because they haven't filled out their pre-medical requirements and need to do that. And again, aspirations, 81% aspire to med school, which is mostly what you need to know, 5% dental and then others to graduate school are still undecided. So that's the, the core of students that I have. The way the course is set up, um, we have the Monday, Wednesday, Friday lectures, so three 50 minute lectures per week. Um, I'd use eye clickers and we'll be talking about that um, and how I use see tools with that a little bit. Um, we have three homeworks. There's one per lecture, and this is me being their athletic trainer. If you're going to do well in any athletic event, you need to get to the gym and train or on the field and train, and you need to get into PECA and, and train. So this is my way of keeping up with them and prodding them along. And then they have a GSI led discussion each week. Grading in the course, I don't have as much peer review or more projects, um, a lot more uh, quantitative um, grading, eye clicker, homework, and discussion. They do get mostly effort points for doing that. And again, that's designed to keep them motivated and working on the material. And then we have three midterm exams and a final. All right, so how does these tools provide interaction for come to 30? And I was trying to think about what interactions we have, both between myself and my students my students and one another, and my students and the resources that I have available to them. Um, when I started looking at putting material online, I actually started way back with Dreamweaver and doing my own <coughs> website, and my inner techn technology was just here, let me give this information to you. I love C-Tools because it's a lot easier than doing that. Um, I do disseminate a lot of information, and I put use it for resources. It's a great shell, as, as we've seen um, with the other speakers, but it allows me to store and organize data, and I think my students are using it 24-7. I watch them on their laptops go and pull data and pull resources from different places and it's their shell but it's also kind of their starting point for what they're looking at. And it also allows me to give them a lot of resources and to organize those. Um, a lot of students learn a lot of different ways. I'm mostly juniors and seniors so I figured out, like, figured out a little bit more about how they um, like to learn. And so I try to have a lot of different ways for them to learn. I have more resources and they really have time to use. Although some of them try to use them all. Um, it also allows me to communicate to my students about their grades and let them know where they stand in the course. I mentioned I have pre-meds, and they're very <laughs> concerned about their grades at every point, and that, that's, that's helped a lot with a lot of questions. They, it's it's a nice because they have to log in, and I can individually post that to them, and they can see their own grades. So that has actually been a useful tool for me. Um, again, with students, they interact with C-Tools with the resources and, and use it for that, so they can customize what they need. And then um, the last piece from the most interactive piece, you know, think of interaction, the instructor student interaction. I'm gonna talk about that. Um, I use the forum, and I know um, Mika was suggesting that that was a little bit harder to get the students to participate, but I'll talk about that because that's probably the most um, instructor student dialogue that I have. 
Um, this is my menu, Office Tools, for my class. I use the syllabus feature, um, uh, as most people do, announcements and resources, look at the first three up there that everyone uses, um, and most people know how to use those. Resources for me is, again, where I organize all these resources for them, from lecture slides, um, I have past exams and practice problems for them to use, I have them the keys to those, which is good and bad. Um, I have my lecture notes, I always post lecture notes ahead of time, and I do problems in class and I do I think or questions in class. So I'll send them a set of notes that don't have the answers, don't have the problems worked out, and then after lecture I'll post the same set of slides but including the answers. So if they miss lecture, they can get access to those. So um, I have almost kind of a real time update there. Looked at lecture tools and uh, may move to that in the future. Um, I also can organize some animations and simulations for them to interact with as another resource, particularly for my visual learners. Um, they have equation sheets and data tables are important in the course. Um, I have some fun stuff like a Mahjong chemistry um, site. Mm -hmm. And then um, I do use a homework system that's outside C Tools website, and I have the link to that. So again, back to the shelf, get to the um, iTunes do, I do podcasts. I have audio podcasts with the lecture slides in there that I do after class. Um, I've actually used the poll feature in C-Tools for very simple things. Um, not quite as big as even lessons, but occasionally for getting kind of opinions or, or looking at things. Um, I actually have a poll set up right now. I've got information in the fall textbook. There are a couple different formats, and I'm kind of doing a survey. What's going to be best for you? How should we offer that? So just look at that. Um, again, grade books. Um, I use, as, this is a resource that, again, became very viable to me teaching humans. Um, and I can post their iClicker scores, exam scores, quizzes scores, I can write where they're at. If there's a clerical error for some reason in dealing with 400 students, you do make mistakes occasionally. If you've recorded a grade wrong, they know. They see their grade, they say, wait a minute, my exam score doesn't match what's in T-Tools, what's going on here, and then we can correct that. Unfortunately, it happens no matter how careful we are. We'll have that come up once the semester over the course of all the exams, so it's not that bad, but we can fix it. And um, iClicker scores will automatically load. That is a wonderful godsend as opposed to Quizdom. It's really easy to upload their iClicker scores, so it's great for that. Um, I'd love to be able to add bonus points to them and kind of have an assignment out of zero occasionally. You know, please fill out the end of course evaluations. You get two extra points. Let me tell you, that makes the evaluation <laughs> response go up dramatically for two points. But again, these are pre-med, so they're very concerned about all the points. And uh, I had to kind of do a little bit of work to get the grade book to match with me. So it's not perfect, but it's a pretty good feature. And again, communication is important. I think where I want to spend my most time interactively again is the chat room versus the forum. Um, we saw earlier um, some evidence in the chat room, and someone asked about the chat room and if there were any ground rules laid. And um, I opened up the chat room with, uh, well, with some verbal ground rules. I should have had some written ones. And most students were pretty respective of keeping the content to the course, but there's a point at which when I had a larger class, I, I started with a chat room um, in this last spring when I had 80 students. I like to start small, and I know for many of you 80 is big, but for me 80 is small, so start small and use it then. And um, I had a really good, good experience in the spring with 80 students in the chat room. They would post questions, reply to one another. I had two or three wonderful students who helped out regularly. So I kept the chat room open for the fall with 410 students, and that got too big and that got more out of control. There were a lot more posts. It was harder to follow the threads and what was going on. And I also had students telling jokes and planning get-togethers and when they were going to go out and they were done with their homework. Um, so despite the fact that they knew I was in there frequently enough and um, asked them not to do that, but it still kind of came up. So I got away from the chat room and went to the forum where you can do a more threaded discussion and control that. And I did that in the winter, and I think the forum may be why I was nominated to give this talk, because I've had a lot of very positive feedback on using the forum. Um, chat room was being used, not for general questions, but I mentioned I have a homework for every lecture. So we have about 36 homeworks over the course of the semester. Um, I have practice problems for all the exams, which they all do because they're really practice exams. So I have all these problems out there, and if students have questions on them, usually it's specific problems, and they want to get information on that. And you put those into a chat room, and you have literally thousands of problems, and people are posting over them. Now, there's some linearity to it, but um, we couldn't keep it organized. So I went to the forum, and I'll um, show you just a second what that um, looks like. Do we have any notes? Go 
going to the forums, this is from the past term, but I can actually set up the discussions where I have a general category and then these are all the lecture homeworks. And students can go find, if they know where their problem is, um, they can go find it in here and we can um, set up the questions, they'll do it by question number, uh, numbers, homework two, number three. And if I get emails, I dump them on here on the forum and so we can organize where the information was posted. And they really like that. If they had a problem, they knew right where to come and they could start doing it. It was a challenge getting them to respond. They like to think that I was the expert and I should do all the responding. But with a little bit of encouragement, um, they started responding to one another, replying to one another. And this became a way for me to check and monitor what was going on. I would check my email and I would check the form and post. And they really like getting those responses. Not always answered, but so we have the key, we understand this is the answer, but how do you get that? And they could post some questions. And they used it more and more as the semester went on. And I think they liked the organization of it. So again, I like the forum. Um, I did have to encourage students to reply that that gave a level of organization to all the problems that we had in the class and created some very nice interaction and responses between students and between myself. And they, they will are willing to come uh, The last three tools that I used, um, the <coughs> site info, the iClicker, again, iClickers are something that um, the other speakers haven't talked about, but are wonderful for me in a science class environment to pose a question to them, have them respond to the question and give me feedback on how things are going in lecture. Um, so that becomes an interactive piece too. I also use it at my time to move up and down the aisles and get those individual questions where people might not ask in a group this big or in a group of 200 students, but will ask if I walk by their desk and I'm right there. Like, hey, Dr. Godfrey, what's, what's going on? So um, that's a good place too. And then the um, other tools are pretty commonly used. So how do you know the technology is effective? Um, I don't have any quantitative data. And I know I'm a scientist, and that's what I'm supposed to, to have. But um, I have gotten a lot of positive verbal feedback on it. Um, they like all the resources. It's organized and it's easy to find help. And I think that's the biggest thing for CTOOLS is this organization. Here, I want to have these resources for you. I want you to be able to use them and find what you want. And CTOOLS has really allowed me to do that. And the organization for the help of the questions on the forum, I think, has been critical. And again, I think that's why I'm here. Um, they're getting great diagnostic scores in general on the MCAT, which is very important to them. And I had a student tell me the other day, I thought I was going to hate PICO, but I really like it. So the course is going reasonably well that way. There's all these rumors that you know organic's supposed to be awful, but PICO is just as bad. And they're not. <laughs> um, my wish list for where I could go, I would love to have the homework, the web assign integrated into the C tool so I could kind of have everything under one, um, one form or group and integrate the textbook and kind of all of it there. And that's fine that I haven't gotten there. I like the animations and more interactive homework um, and pieces. And this isn't necessarily a list for C tools, this is just my wish list in the future. Um, I do podcasts, they're not video. Um, video is important for problem solving, and we do some demonstrations in class, which of course are the most exciting time, so it'd be nice to have those. Um, and maybe the video instead of the podcast, although podcasts are used pretty well. So that is what I have been talking about.